record this so we can. So this is the powder pattern of sodium chloride. And what we want to do is we want to determine what are the two theta values for it. And so it's already given us the HKL indices. Yeah, I know it says two theta down here, but we don't know exactly what two theta value that we have for each of these indices. So what we want to do is we want to take the uh, two theta value or excuse me, HKL values and determine the two theta value. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we did yesterday. And this is sodium chloride and sodium chloride is a cubic system. And it's, uh, it's A axis is about 5.463 angstroms. So that's the length of the unit cell. And we know it's copper radiation because 1.54 angstrom radiation tells us it's copper. So remember there are two equations we're going to need. One of them is one over D squared. equals H squared plus K squared plus L squared divided by A squared. This is the, this is the equation for a cubic system. And then from that, we can then use this equation in lambda, I'll put lambda in a second, equals 2d sine theta. So what we want to do is determine the 2 theta. So once we find theta, we multiply it by 2 to get 2 theta. So let's do a simple one first. We'll take the 2, 0, 0 plane. So from the 200 zero zero plane, what we're going to find is we're going to find the D spacing. Because if we know the D, and we know already know lambda, and we know N is default 1, we can find the theta value. So that's our first step. We want to calculate what is the D value for the 200 zero zero plane. The way we set this up, since it's two zero zero, h squared is four plus zero plus zero divided by five point four six three squared. So I've already squared the two, that's where we got the four from. And now this will be one over d squared, and then we're gonna flip it to find d squared. Let me get my calculator out. So we get one over D squared equals zero point one three four zero three. Now we're going to take the inverse to get d squared. So we get 7.4611. So this is d squared, then we got to find D by taking the square root. We get 
seven, three, two. So now that we know D, we can solve for sine, or we can solve for theta. Because again, N, in the Bragg's law, N is always one. And we discussed this very early on because of, of first degree, uh, uh, for example, two zero zero is the same thing as the second degree one zero zero. So there's no, no, no need for more than the first degree reflections because they're all equivalent to the second and third, the second and third reflections as well. So N is always set to one. So we have one of 1.54 equals two, 2.732. Sign theta. So we get zero. Point two eight one eight equals sine theta. And the way you get rid of a sine theta is you take the inverse of sine or the arc sine of both sides and you get the what theta is. So theta. Again, it would be the inverse of sine. So if you're using a calculator, just hit inverse, or no, second sine, that gives you the inverse of it. And I get it to be 16.37. Okay, right here. 16. So that's theta, remember two theta, is twice that. So 16, 37 times two, 32.74. So that kind of correlates to what we see on the powder, the fraction powder. So that's how we go from HKL values to two theta values. And anytime you see a simulated uh, X-ray powder pattern, this is how they find the two data values because they already know the HKL values, they know the lattice parameters, then they can determine the two theta values. And so, for example, if the two zero zero is at 32.74, you can, you can envision that the four zero zero would be double this angle. So the four zero zero would be uh, close to doubling of the two zero zero. So we did 32.74 times two. You know, this four zero zero would be around 65 degrees because the only difference between two zero zero and four zero zero is we're doubling the H value. So then it's going to shift the two theta down by double. So you can expect the two theta of four zero zero to be around you know, 65.5 degrees in that very close to that area. Now, if we look at another one, so that was one, we'll look at one more. Let's say we want to look at the 222 two, two. reflection and see what two theta value it has. So I'm just going to come back over here. So we want to look at the 222 two, two reflection. What is the two theta value? So when we set up our equation, so since it's 222, two, two, we're going to square each two. There's going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4. Divided by a squared. We've already done that. So a squared was 
squared, so 29.844. Now we can find out what 1 over d squared is. 0 0.402. We take the inverse, we can find d squared. 2.487. Now notice here that the d squared is actually smaller than the d squared on the previous example. That's because the uh, 2 theta is going to be larger. So when the 2 theta is larger, the d decreases. So d equals the square root of 2.487. And again, this is in angstroms. So this is the D spacing for the 222 reflection plane. Now we want to set up, we know that in lambda equals 2D sine theta. So we can solve for sine theta. Oh, snap. In lambda equals two D. This was a So again, n is 1, lambda is 1.54, 2 times d spacing is 1.577, sine theta. I just have to leave that theta there. And so now we get that sine theta Looks like they had Greek symbols on this thing that make it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now we get what sine theta equals. Now we can determine what theta is by taking the inverse of sine. We get is 29.22. And then 2 theta would be twice that, which would be 2 times 58.44. And you see that from the diffraction pattern, it's around 58 degrees to theta. So again, I just wanted to show you how you go from HKL values to two theta values uh, for powder diffraction patterns. Uh, any questions about this before we uh, conclude today's lecture? If there's no questions, that's all I have for today. So we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, that's it. So have a good day.